as we go on to the last section we cover in Math 1103, it will be using the skills we've developed in factoring equations that have values to the third power or second power. That is, polynomial equations, and in particular, quadratic equations, as we see down here. Now, we did mention the difference between an expression and an equation. An equation has an equal sign, while what we've been doing up to this point, they didn't have it. Now, to do this, we're going to use a technique that's called the zero factor property. And I'll just go over it with you here. If we have item A and we're multiplying it by item B, and that equals zero. That is, A times B equals zero. The only way that can be true is either A is equal to zero, or and, or B is equal to zero. So when we see this, and by the way, this is called the zero factor property. And they illustrate it here. Now, if we think of this equation in which we have a binomial times a binomial, this is in a sense factor A, and this would be times factor B, and we're equal equaling it to zero we can use this property. And the way we use it is to say that this factor equals zero, or this factor equals zero. So then we solve it. And we get here, just transposing, x equals negative two. And here we get x equals, after we transpose, a 6. So if we put a negative 2 here, and a negative and a 6 here, negative 2 plus zero, 2 is 0. So this would be 0 times this, that's 0. Or if this is a 6 minus 6, this is a 0. 0 times 0 is 0. So what we're going to do is take a trinomial that we'll have that's in standard form that's equal to zero. We're going to factor it into its binomial factors. Take each of these factors, equal it to zero, and that is a way of solving this quadratic equation. And this is, of course, the factoring method using the zero factor property. Now, once you get it in this form, it's rather easy to solve. We're just going to take each of these factors and equal it to zero. So here we're just transposing. This is going to be a negative 8. X is a negative 8 here. And here, X will equal 5. key is to get it in this form. Step one is, is the equation in standard form of the quadratic equation? And it is. That is, all the terms are on this side equal to zero. Now what we want to do is factor this, putting our two sets of parentheses, and then taking each factor and equaling them to zero. So we transpose the negative one, becomes a positive one. 
Now we're going to divide both sides by 2. x equals 1 half. Here we just transpose the positive 5 and x equals negative 5. Now if you put either of those answers into this equation, it's going to make it a 0. And in fact, let's do 1. Now we could put the 1 half there, but we'll use the negative 5. That'll be easier. So negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. Now here we have a negative 45. And this is another negative 5. So negative 45 and negative 5 is a negative 50. 50 minus 50 equals 0. So this checks. And the 1 half would work as well. So the rules are outlined here for us. Step 1, write the equation in standard form so that one side of the equation is in standard form and it equals 0. Factor the polynomial completely. Set each factor containing a variable equal to 0. Solve the equation and then check it like we did. Okay, let's go on. So in example 3, that is an equation, but is it in standard form? No. So we have to put it in standard form. So we do this, 2x squared minus 7x. I'm going to take my 4, move it over to this side as a negative 4, and that equals 0. So we're here. It's now in standard form. Now I factor it. And it's 2x and x. Now I need a 4 and a 1 there. My larger needs to be negative. This is going to be positive. Now I equate each of these to 0. And then solve. So x will be, I'll transpose that, is a negative 1 over 2. So negative 1 half. And here it's easy, just transpose that. x equals 4. And they do check. Again, we'd have to put this one in standard form and factor it. Now this is the work you want to show in your homework log as you do these. And again, as we finish our work in 11.03, we are up to some challenging things. Here's our equations. It's quadratic, but it's not in standard form. So we have to distribute. And that's what they do here. Now we want to get all of the terms over to the other side. So here we're going to transpose that. becomes a 9x squared. We're going to transpose the 12x to the other side. And we had to actually do these like terms here. That would be a 17. And then when we transpose a 13 over, it becomes a negative 13, and this becomes a 4. So now it's in standard form. We factor that, equate each of our factors to 0, solve each one, and notice that both of these are the same. And the reason is because this is a perfect square trinomial. Ah, 
Now, when we get that answers are the same like this, we don't write a solution that is negative two-thirds, comma, negative two-thirds. Since they are the same, we only write one of them. Now, keep in mind that when we're solving quadratic equations, equations that are to the second degree, we should get two answers. The key is, if the answers are the same, we only list it once. In example five, again, as we look at this, this doesn't look like it's in standard form. And going back to chapter two, where we had fractions, how do we get rid of fractions? Well, by multiplying every term by the lowest common denominator, which is a three here. And they're showing it this way. So here, three times two x squared is six x squared. Here, the threes will cancel out and you just get 17x and three times one is three. So now we just transpose these two. We get this equation in standard form. I like the way they're putting the strategy to get to these steps. Now we equate each of these factors to zero and we get our answers. Again, since it's a quadratic equation, we should get two answers. Now, if they're the same answer, we only list it once. And let me work the practice problem for you here. So, lowest common denominator is two. We're gonna multiply each term by two. Here, the twos cancel out. So this will be eight x squared equals 15x plus 2. Now we're going to put it in standard form, 8x squared minus, transposing, 15x, transpose that, equals 0. Now we factor. And uh, this one looks a little easy here. 8 and a 2 and a 1. Because we want a 16 and a 1x to give us a negative 15 in the middle. So this will be negative. This will be positive. We equal each of these to 0. So here x equals, transpose that, negative 1 divided by 8, or x equals 2. Now, an interesting thing happens every once in a while in some courses. They'll say, take these answers, and what was the equation this may have come from? Well, you work it backwards, and then there's an equation right there. Now, you wouldn't get this one because you didn't know this was divided by 2 over here. But this is a good one right there. Okay, now this is in the book over here, but let me do this one for you. So it's not standard form. So you go x to the third, bring this over, minus 4x equals 0. Now, this is to the third power, so theoretically we're going to need three solutions. So how do we start to solve this? Well, there's a common factor of x that we can factor out. Then we get x squared minus 4 equals 0. And now we see here we have the difference of perfect squares. This will factor into its conjugates x plus 2, x minus 2, equals 0. Now we take each of our factors, 
and equal it to zero. This one will equal zero. This one will equal zero. And then we get x equals zero. That's one. x equals, transpose that, a negative two. And here, x equals, transpose that, a positive two. And there are our solutions. Okay? And this one would be done in a similar way. Factor out an x once it's in standard form here. This one more. Example 7. Again, we have two terms on this side equal two terms on that side. We transpose these and then we get this. This is in standard form, but it's to the third degree. So we can think of it then. We want to factor. We're going to factor by grouping. So this will be one set of terms, and this will be one set of terms. Now, they have rearranged things here, but you could do it this way too. Out of these first two terms, you're taking out an x squared, and you get an x plus 5. And out of these second two, you're factoring out a negative 1, and you get an x plus 5. So then you get x squared minus 1, and x plus 5, and all of this equals 0. So, now this is the difference of two squares. So you have to factor that a little bit more. And this will be into its conjugates, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 5. Now equal each factor to 0. Just saving a little room, they do it better here. So this will be x equals negative 1, here x equals 1, and here x equals a negative 5. And there they are. Okay, so toward the end of the course, they're going to have us look at solving problems modeled by polynom polynomial equations, quadratic equations. So here, if we have a little rocket here, and we did this in our high school physics class, you may have done something like this. We say the height of the rocket is equal to this formula, where t is time. So where will this rocket be in, let's say, one second? Well, in one second, you just put a one there, and a 1 there, and then solve it, and it would be 128 feet. And in two seconds, it's going to be 224 feet. And if we were to do the trajectory, it's going to go up, and then eventually it's going to go back down to the ground. And what is the height of the ground? Well, the height of the ground is zero. That's sea level or ground level here. So, if we have this equation and we want to find out what t is, we can solve it for t. Here they're giving us t. We can see the height. But we want to know when is it going to hit the ground. Well, we factor this out. You can take a 16 out of each one. And we have a negative 16 t equals 0. Or t minus 9 equals 0. So for this one, it's going to be a 0. Let's get my pen working here. There we go. Or it's going to be nine seconds. Well, 
you know when you send a rocket up and it comes back down to the ground, the zero is not a valid answer for that. Now, it comes out of the equation, but it's not valid. So we reject this one. And this is what we say is our answer. It will hit the ground in nine seconds. And here they're just changing the parameters where they want you to do the same thing and equal that to zero. Now they're introducing us to what is called the Pythagorean theorem that many of you are familiar with. That if you had a right triangle and this side was A and this side was B and if you squared the measure of this side and square the measure of this side, it would equal the square of the side opposite the right angle. So we call this leg A, leg B, and the hypotenuse, leg C. And there is the Pythagorean summarized. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, now in this example, uh, it tells of a carpenter who wanted to see if when he framed a wall that this angle here is a right triangle. And what he used is a triangle whose sides were three consecutive integers. Well, how would you set that up? Well, this side would be x, this side would be x plus 1, and then the longer side, the hypotenuse, would be x plus 2. So what is your equation here? Well, it would be x squared plus x plus 1 squared equals x plus 2 squared. And that's how it would look with the right angle there. Let's work this out. And I could write it out for you, but it's nicely written out here. So again, our x, x plus 1, x plus 2 for three consecutive integers. Then we're going to square the x. We're going to square this. And we're using that special squaring a binomial and this. Then we're going to put everything over to one side, get this, factor it, and we get then x equals 3 for this one. Or x equals a negative 1. No, we can't have a length as a negative 1. So then our side then for the shortest side would be 3, the next one would be 4, and the next one would be 5. And if we check that out, 3 squared plus 4 squared, does that equal 5 squared? And we have 9 plus 16 equals 25, and 25 equals 25. Yes, it does. Okay. Now, something we mentioned way back in the course was that these quadratic equations were actually parabolas that were going to cross, if you put them on a graph, your x-axis there, that would be an intercept, and there. And if we had something like this, where our y value, remember we said we could substitute the function symbol with the y, the y is 0, which is what they're saying. So if we equate this to 0, we are what we call finding the zeros. And in this case, they're referred to as the x-intercepts. So for this equation, it would intersect 
x is going to be here a negative 2 and here is going to be a positive 6 which is what they're showing so when the value of y is 0 we have found our zeros which is the x intercept so as we solve these equations we are, in a sense, finding the zeros. Where does the parabola of our quadratic equation cross the x-axis when y right here is zero? And that's what we're doing. And we did mention, you recall a little earlier, that if our parabola opens upward, like this, our standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Again, this zero refers to the value of y here. If our a value was negative, it opened downward. If our a value is positive, of this quadratic equation, it opens upward. Okay, for our match each function with a graph. Well, if we plotted our zeros, our x-intercepts, here x is a 3 and a negative 2. So th this one goes with this one. Now here this x is a 0. This one equals a negative 2. And this is a positive 2. So a negative 2, a 0, and a positive 2. Well, this one looks like this one. And this one would be a 2, negative 2, and a positive 1. And there they are, right there. Okay, so rather easy if you know what's going on. So that winds up the textbook material. We'll now go on to our mini lecture so you can have some practice.